and thank you to all of you for joining us today. Um, I hope you really enjoyed the various sessions that have been on since 4 a.m. this morning um, and just enjoyed the conversations that have been taking part as well in the in the live feeds. So this next session is going to be a very focused Q&A session, almost an interview really, um, with um, some of my co-panelists here that I will introduce shortly. Um, but just to set the tone for the session, really, um, we've got about 40 minutes or so um, to explore this, this topic of University of Applied Sciences. As with more and more University of Applied Sciences taking to peer to peer in their marketing and recruitment and partnering with us um, over the past two years, we thought it was time to have a dedicated session specifically to the world of Applied Sciences universities and use these next 40 minutes to really dig deeper and hear directly from Manik Mengels, um, who is one of our long-standing partners at Carol de Grotte University of Applied Sciences and Arts, located in Antwerp, Belgium. And just before we you know, go into the questions and officially start the session, I just wanted to let you know of some of the themes we're looking to explore today. So um, one of the themes will be the recruitment strategies used by um, the, the University of Applied Science um, domestically, but also more recently, um, how they apply this internationally, so recruiting their international students. Um, how they tailor their messaging. So this is going to be very important for them as they've got very specific audiences, um, digging into some of the challenges they face. And also, of course, you know, what today is all about peer to peer. Um, so that crucial role peer to peer um, and their current students can play in recruiting the next generation of Carol de Grot students. So before we dig into all that, um, as Poppy mentioned, um, I'm Cami. I'm one of the customer success managers at, here at Unibuddy, and I'm so pleased to be joined today by my colleague Jack. Uh, if you were tuned in earlier, you might have heard from him earlier um, with Ilaria, and also, of course, Manik Mengels from Carol de Grot University. So I think it's best to hand over to them directly so that they can do their own introductions um, before we kick off with some questions. Jack or Manik, who wants to go first? I'll um, go. Oh, you go first. Um, you're the guest. Sure. Right? Very rude of me. Very, very rude of me. All right. <laughs> not a problem. Um, so my name is uh, Marnik. Um, not the easiest, names to, uh, easiest name to pronounce today, I can imagine. Um, I would also like to apologize in advance. My English might have a little accent. Um, but yeah, um, I work at uh, KDG in Antwerp, a University of Applied Sciences. Uh, one of the biggest in uh, Belgium, but Belgium itself isn't that big, so I don't know if that's saying a lot. Um, and my uh, role specifically is online marketing, social strategy, uh, and a lot of uh, uh, small things. I manage the uh, Unibody platform for us. Um, I also do some video editing, uh, but the main focus will still be online marketing and social strategy. Yeah. Thank um, you. And I'm, I'm Jack. Um, I won't do the full intro again, but um, as a partnerships manager, most of my day is spent talking to universities about how they use student ambassadors and peer-to-peer. And, -peer. and as my markets are, are Europe, and, and that's where I focus my time, I speak to an enormous amount of applied science universities across Europe. So um, I'm just here to kind of chip in when needed and, and maybe share some observations across, across wider Europe, not just Benelux. Thank you both. Um, so, Manik, uh, my first question to you, and this is really to set the scene um, before we go further and deeper into some of those topics we listed earlier, but really is to find out why um, you initially chose to start using Unibody. So that was back in March 2018 um, when you first went live with the platform. So, yeah, why, why did you choose to use such a platform? Uh, well, we were uh, in the market for a low-key uh, low low key way to reach um, prospective students. Um, we used to have contact details on the website for all of our different programs. Um, those could be teachers, those uh, could be staff. We had a telephone number and email address. But um, as I'm sure uh, a lot of people might have noticed that uh, this uh, generation of prospective students, at least in Belgium, doesn't like uh, direct calling somebody or emailing somebody that they don't really know. And emailing in itself is not a thing that they like to do. So we noticed that we were not getting a lot of um, not a lot of interaction from those um, uh, from that way. Um, so we started looking for something that was a little bit more uh, intuitive, uh, that seemed a little more 
uh, but still seen professional. Um, and Unibody was pretty much one of its kind um, in what they offered. Um, and it was easy to use for both prospective students and easy to use for staff and uh, student bodies. Uh, which isn't always the case because you can say it's easy for prospective students, uh, but it also has to be easy for the people using it on the other end. Uh, and Unibody seemed to tick all of those boxes. Um, and another thing from the online marketing standpoint, we could make a direct link uh, from our CRM uh, system to Unibody. So we could also track prospective students. Okay, they talked to this and this buddy about this and this uh, topic, um, and they left their email address email address for uh, some to get more information from our school, uh, which made it easier to tailor our message if we saw that they have been talking to like a student that uh, is following a course in marketing and we saw they have a lot of questions and a lot of interest, okay, they will get mails tailored to that course. Um, so yeah, basically check all the boxes that we have. Um, and it was also easy to get students on board to be buddies because they feel like uh, part of something more special. Um, you could say you can just put the email addresses of students on the website, or you can say, hey, do you want to join the Unibody program? Um, basically, they're still reply replying to messages, um, but they feel like part of something greater, and that motivates them more intrinsically to actually do it. Yeah. Great. And just putting Unibody aside, um, I mean, it's great to hear all you've done with it and kind of how easy it was to adopt, but how else do you currently use peer-to-peer -peer and obviously that student voice more generally across your recruitment? Uh, yeah, in different aspects. Um, our Instagram uh, for, our, uh, for our university, uh, the story aspect is basically all students. Um, we don't do anything. Uh, that we want to push the stories are purely student uh, related content um like a lot of educational like a lot of universities we also use uh the basic testimonial videos and texts uh we do online and offline open days um and of course the the informers there are also students um we had to do online open days like i can uh, imagine a lot of universities had to do and we had a little video on every page telling you oh, what's on this page and what can you find here and those were also students that are in those videos uh, there's a big convention in belgium um, in which all high schools attend to find out more about higher education uh, with their students and also there we try to put as many students as possible to tell their story um, and we also have a couple of special conventions uh, that are purely manned by students uh, in antwerp specifically there's a convention for uh, prospective students that come from different backgrounds and uh, you can sign into it and we every year we sign into that to um, have some students there that came from different backgrounds themselves and purely um, give one-to-one -one advice and there's no teachers involved nothing uh, and yeah that's basically a couple of a uh, couple of ways that we try to implement them um, let me see yeah and I guess um, yeah testimonials yeah yeah that's basically it Great, thank you. And, and how about generally in your kind of marketing strategy, um, are there any other ways that you integrate and implement that, that student voice? Uh, yeah, the, 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 the thing there is uh, that it's hard to find um, because prospective students are even, in a, especially in a small country like Belgium, get bombarded by messages from all kinds of different universities. And most of the time they're basically saying the same thing. I right? don't have to uh, beat around the bush there. Um, but uh, there's, uh, we try to make our testimonials seem more genuine, uh, and that's not an easy thing to do um, because you want to find it's a fine line between uh, intrinsically motivating students to tell their story and still have something that is uh, marketable. Uh, it's not that's not easy. Um, but uh, uh, I'm just finding my words here too. Uh, no, <laughs> to no problem. Uh, um, so yeah, we try to do high quality testimonials, but to not do just a simple interview kind of thing, which can, we notice that students get uh, very nervous about. We try to give them some other types of content, which basically tells their, tells their story as a testimonial and um, still gets the message across, uh, across, but doesn't feel so forced. Uh, for example, we had a student who was uh, studying to be a social worker and he had a lot of DJ projects on the side. Uh, to do a DJ workshops with youth that uh, don't have access to the equipment and still wanted to do something. So which kind of um, 
really fit well into his course because he wanted to make more of his uh, nonprofits that he built around it. Okay, so we could just say, okay, let's do an interview with the guy. We gave him five questions, five answers, based, bam, bam, that's the video. But we decided to make him our resident DJ for a year. Um, so he made a Spotify list every month for students. He made, um, he was the DJ for like stuff like proclamations, uh, decree ceremonies, receptions, any KDG related things. He was a go-to DJ. And the more he got into the spotlight, we noticed the more students wanted to know more about him. So he had this landing page on the website, like this is our house DJ, this is what he does. Uh, you can find his Spotify lists here. So in an indirect way, they still got to know the student and his story, but in a more fun, interactive way than just a basic uh, video with question and answer. Um, and our, soul, uh, our social strategy is also centered around um, um, yeah, getting those uh, those voices out in such a way we we don't. Um, when we looked at the uh, the landscape um, of our competitors, yeah, competitors, um, we noticed that uh, they were all sending the same message basically week after week. Like this degree has went to this company, visit this degree has been doing this, this degree has doing this. And we thought it was very not not authentic sounding. You didn't hear from the students. You didn't. That was not really, we felt felt, felt very artificial, um, like I'm a big brand and this is the message that, message that I'm sending. So we've uh, altered our social media strategy to mostly focus on uh, us doing fun things for our students and students speaking up about it, uh, reacting below it, commenting below it. And our vision on it is that if a prospective student uh, checks us out on Facebook, he will see not uh, the school that is uh, sending message after message after message that is not really uh, getting any reaction from their own students. Uh, no, they will see KDG that is doing fun things for their students and they have uh, the feeling that, okay, this might be uh, a fun university to participate in. Let me see what courses they can offer. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Manik. That was, uh, I, I really enjoyed that, that story of a homegrown KDG official DJ um, and also social media celebrity. Um, that was great. Um, I've got a question for Jack now, actually. Um, just so you can you can breathe a bit, Manik. Um, what from your conversations that you've, you've been having over the past year with um, universities of applied sciences across Europe? What do you see as being kind of the main challenges that you think are really unique to those particular institutions? So obviously, I don't want to kind of homogenize applied sciences universities too much. There, there's hundreds of them, um, but there are a couple of themes that that seem to come up a bit more frequently. So in terms of international recruitment, <clears throat> um, applied science universities are often recruiting from markets where they may not actually have like a really detailed understanding of what an applied science university is and what the differences may be between an applied science university and, an, and a traditional research-based university. Um, as applied science universities don't even really exist in their country. Um, this can mean that the, these students or their parents have certain preconceptions about applied science universities, and this may then need to be addressed by recruitment teams in the conversations they're having with prospects and in their messaging. Um, from a domestic perspective, applied science universities often, um, not always, but often have a higher proportion of, of traditionally underrepresented groups. So for example, this could be those students who may be the first in their family or from the first generation in their family to attend university and study a degree. And that, that in itself can bring distinct challenges um, as these students are often not just considering options in terms of what university or what degree am I going to study, but the, the, the decision's bigger. It, it's whether university is right for them at all. So for this demographic, the messaging again needs to be different um, and often there's other risk factors so you may see that these students um, have a higher risk of them dropping out um, of the application of the recruitment process post application or dropping out earlier post enrollment so again the sort of support and the messaging that these students need may be different as well. Mm. And I'm, I'm curious Manik going back to your experience at Carol de Gras, are you seeing this particular challenge of having to articulate that difference between a university of research and a university of applied science and if so how do you meet that challenge um, for both your domestic market which um, you know is your biggest market but also that kind of growing international um, student market you're, you're targeting as well 
Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, as Jack said, it's it's tailoring uh, the message, um, and we also see that if if you look at a very broad uh, spectrum, that you have two kinds of uh, prospective students: the one that already know they are going to go into higher education, um, and the ones that are still doubting um, because they they don't know what it entails. Um, and this, we mostly find that uh, prospective students that are uh, looking for uh, more the academic university. Um, degree that they already know um, okay i'm going to go into higher education it's just a matter of choosing and some prospective students that uh, might want to go to applied sciences are still more doubtful and can i do this can i even uh, manage to go into higher education can i can i um uh, can i meet expectations and um where the information on the one end uh, to students that already know that i'm going into higher education it's just a matter of finding out how and why uh, might be more okay these are the differences between the courses these are the differences uh between uh, the degree you're getting uh just like more detailed stuff um you have to make sure to the the, the other end that isn't sure of what to um uh, what course to follow in higher education or even as, if higher education is for them is to uh summarize a couple of uh the advantages and make them really clear to them in a way that they um um, understand them um, because um, universities always have this habit of making things very complicated and, and fluffy when they send out their message in my opinion like uh, you can uh, you can be a part of this uh, world and you can do this and this and the limits are endless uh, but to that audience it might just be okay you will have a degree you will get a better paycheck and um, you will um, be able to do a master's degree if you want to but in a sense you will have to you have to study more that's true it's it's not that easy but you will get a better paycheck you will get more job security you will be able to do these these and these things that otherwise you wouldn't be able to uh and we feel that those um arguments are more suited towards this group than the group that already knows they're going to into higher education because they already know that they will be from their parents or people in their network that they will be getting a chance at a better job or a better paycheck or, or all of those things and yeah it's it's very different uh, in that way um let me see if i have said anything else on that um and that's for the domestic audience and international there's even more different facets to take into account a lot of cultural differences uh that you need to articulate which isn't that easy um is my degree uh worth anything in belgium uh, if i get a belgian degree is it any worth anything in my home country uh, what can i do with it um and also the parents are a very uh popular um are a very popular audience over there because those uh, because they have to pay for the the education most of the time and it's a lot more expensive to study internationally um, at least is the case in Belgium than to study domestically um, while it would be less of a factor in Belgium to directly target the parents because education here is basically very affordable for a uh, very affordable for most people. Um, and the process internationally is also quite uh, long and very uh, bureaucratic uh, to get through. So those are yeah, three, only for those three groups are all those, uh, are very are very distinct three very distinct uh, different messages to bring out. Yeah. And you talked a bit about your ambassadors there. Um, what do you see as the role of these current students? So they've successfully passed their first year at university. Um, they're going into second year. Um, what do you see? You know, as, as being their role um, and what kind of role they can play in guiding and also convincing you know that that particular audience that group who aren't sure they even want to go to university and they're not so sure about the decision to go to university what do you think the role of one of your student ambassadors can play in this particular situation uh yeah we feel that their role is to um and we give these specific instructions on anything that they do is it a testimonial is it uh, a convention where they are is it uh, an instagram takeover that they're doing to make it as uh, less of a sales talk as possible um most of the time they have like the the, the reaction that oh i have to sell my uh, degree i have to say that it's, it's perfect and it's good and it's it's all uh rainbow and sunshine but it isn't always uh, great to study at a university sometimes there, go there are going to be hard times and we really really want them to show the good and the bad and not just about the degree about their life as a student because university is one aspect but you have a lot of aspects that surrounds uh the actual classes and 
uh, we feel that they need to give a really open and um, unforced uh, view of what they think, even if it's bad. If we have an Instagram takeover during the exams and uh, all week she's uh, posting about how hard it is, yeah, she can because that's what she's feeling at that home moment and it's also important to bring that message. Um, <clears throat> You can be like, oh, the exams here are uh, super easy if you work for it, but that's <clears throat> that uh, is a very generic message, and that, that it's it's not it doesn't it doesn't ring the same with prospective students because these prospective students are trained to recognize uh, advertisements and marketing and sales. Uh, they're not stupid because they they get targeted every day with uh, I don't know how many companies in the world. So trying to make it so as genuine as possible. Um, try to make the interaction as long as possible. Our Instagram takeovers are always a week. And we've noticed on Unibody, they all go always go back to the same student and send the same student messages and really try to keep in that, uh, keeping going on that conversation. Um, let me see if I have any more points about that. Uh, live, so let's see what's... Uh, bodies that we find in the the, the 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 cases that we do and the all the different things to make sure we we get a more a di very diverse audience of uh first year second year third year students so that prospective students can always find something that they kind of uh that they can kind of relate to um just to get that specific message and that specific tone of voice uh, for that student, uh, whether it be uh, in a Unibody bio or an Instagram takeover. Um, we try to go as broad as possible so, so that uh, a broad spectrum of uh, prospective students know, um, uh, can get, yeah, um, get, um, I'm, I'm, a lot, I'm lost for real, uh, words, can get their, uh, their feelings um, recognized and uh, responded to by somebody who knows what it's like. Yeah. Yeah, it's important. I think you're, you're, you're showing just how important it is to have a diverse group of students that your current, your prospective students can relate to. Um, and also it's important that those student ambassadors feel comfortable talking about their experience and, you know, the fact that they too were deciding whether university was the right fit for them, what kind of got them to deciding that it was and, you know, that it's worked out well for them. Um, do you have any tips when you're, you talked about recruiting ambassadors for that? What... Um, What's a good way of kind of checking that someone's going to be fully comfortable and really confident and talking about their their own experience, which is quite unique and you know quite it's going to have its own um, positives and negatives, I guess. And then sharing that experience with others who will be in similar situations. Um, how do you find those perfect ambassadors that are going to be willing to do that? Uh, well, it's it's um, it's really comes down to uh, intrinsic motivation and uh, external motivation um i sometimes get like um requests from uh, teachers or where i used to get those from hey we have this event going on and i want to have an instagram takeover of it uh, and then they find a student that they ask and the student feels obliged to do it and the they do the instagram takeover and it's never good content never because it was um it was asked by a teacher so they felt um they felt obligated to do it uh, but that never works uh, what works easiest for us, uh, and it's, it's, it seems very basic, but that's pretty much it, is just putting an, um, uh, putting an announcement on the internet, hey, this is what we're looking for, um, do you feel uh, that you can do this, uh, just shoot me a message, I will try to uh, get you up to speed and get you set up. And the people that uh, intrinsically want to do it, they don't get any uh, degree or certification from it, they don't get any... Uh, any money from it or like a gift certificate they just want to do it because they want to do it um those are the people that most of the time give the best message and the best content because they really want to tell that story um and that's basically it's just an open message and not to forcefully start targeting students and asking them which isn't which isn't always easy because you want to give a broad spectrum of students but if only a certain types of students um, respond to your uh, to your announcements, then it's uh, then it gets a bit harder. So it's it's always a bit uh, of give and take. Um, sometimes we get students uh, mentioned to us by teachers, like the student would be good for that because she has a very interesting story. Uh, um, and some sometimes we just 
pose the open question to that student. Say, is this something uh, that you recognize yourself in? Please say so. If you don't want to do it, or if you feel obliged, you don't have to do it. It's not, there's no credit on it. It's just, if you feel like doing it, it's a possibility. And then we find that some still say yes, but uh, some also say no, and that's fine as well. Uh, as long as you don't feel pressured into a role, that's the best content you can have. Yeah, definitely. That's very interesting to hear how the students get involved and recommend student ambassadors. I guess they know them. They know their cohort very well. They know who can do a good job in, you know, portraying that experience and encouraging future students to do the same. Um, are there any specific ways that students can get involved and students can kind of give their feedback and give their advice on to what would make, you know, a, a future, you know, really good student? Um, have you got specific examples of what they can do is in that role of a student ambassador. Um, yeah, we did try to. Um, oh, let me just. Uh, yeah, we did try to, and we're trying to roll that out now. Um, we do um, test some. Um, we have some materials to them, like we let them uh, vote on certain types of content that may or may not come out. Also on social media, we let them vote for what they want to see. Um, student ambassadors in themselves, they can give feedback about the Unibody platform or if they feel that, um, just for an example, um, we have uh, a council at uh, KDG that uh, consists mainly of uh, students with a different, uh, uh, different backgrounds, um, mostly students from like an, um, an African or, uh, or, or an Iraqi or a Syrian background. Um, and the only thing that that council does, and they have, have official power for it, it's uh, it's not just um, uh, something that that doesn't can have impact. Uh, the the upper management actually uh, gave them power to do so. Is like uh, is to analyze uh, KDG and to when they feel that something might be not welcoming enough, or is something is uh, too high of a boundary to cross, or when they feel that something isn't particularly right in a tone of voice, they can just say it and we try to um, make amends because not they can see things that we cannot and, and that's one of the organs, uh, for example, that we have uh, that can um, advise us on stuff like um, just saying, how do you uh, say it in English? Just let me look it up here. Uh, I would try and help, but I'm sure. <laughs> I I had the, if they can uh, do a headscarf uh, in school, what is our policy oh. on that? Uh, do we have to, uh, what do we do with religious symbols or how do we, uh, we have made this post on social media, is it okay? Or is there something that before, uh, I do a lot of posts on social media myself and I don't, oh, I wanted to wish the students good luck on a Islamic holiday because we have also a lot of Islamic students, but I didn't want to know, I, d I wanted to know if there were any cultural, um, things that I needed to watch out for or my, my phrasing that everything was okay. And then I have the, the, this council to, to access and to ask, them, okay, how can I do best uh, tackle this? And then they give input and yeah. Very good. Um, yeah, very good to have, you know, people who know it's, you can go to and, you know, to talk about those kind of more delicate um, messaging um, and have, have some, you know, go-to people that you can rely on there to make sure you're portraying yourself properly um, and, you know, portraying it for them as well um so that's all about you know kind of well tone of voice as well um tailoring your messaging so how do you really tailor your messaging um with some markets um for example who might not be so familiar with what a university of applied science is um and what it what it's not yeah um basically speak their yeah speak their language and give them very clear uh, examples when we notice that um um, some degrees weren't performing as well, and their uh, and prospective students that wanted to follow those uh, want to follow those degrees. Then we made um, like a very simple top ten with gifts list on the website. It was a landing page, and it just says uh, very basically: if you follow this uh, course, this is what you can expect from expect from benefits. I'm just going to pull one up so I can um, like tell you what it specifically. Uh, seven reasons all right so we had one with uh international entrepreneurship is a bachelor's degree that we have and it basically just says um you will get paid well um 
um, you can uh, easily go for a master if you can do this bachelor degree. Uh, you can start your own company. Um, you can go international. Uh, your classroom is international. Very basic things that they know. Uh, we even have a percentage of this is uh, the the number of students that um, that uh, have a job within two months of graduating. We put a percentage on that so they know. Okay, this is uh, what I can do with it. This is my job security. This is what I will earn. Um, so these are all very basic arguments. And after when they click through to the website, they can go into detail. Okay, what are the different courses? What is the the vision and the the, the principles of this course? And then what is everything that that uh, is around? Um, um, why why is it structured like this and stuff like that? Um, so you begin with a very open, loose message to give them, hey, maybe this is something for you, not too big, not too harsh. And then when they get onto the website, the people that are interested, then they can read the full story. Okay, what is uh, what does this actually mean? Um, and that's the way we do it. We try to be broad in our marketing, like um, a very broad message that uh, really talks to them. And then when they get to the website, they can read for themselves. Okay, I'm interested. What does this mean in detail? Because if you start with a lot of details and a lot of very big details, um, that they will really, they, they get those from all the other universities as well. So for them, they cannot see the difference anymore after a while. And it gets very confusing. Um, we, we see uh, a lot of advertisements by other uh, universities that, that basically just come down to okay you can study internationally um you can um, um we have a network our teachers are experts um but that's saying nothing because that is something that every university has um it's, it's those are some some weird arguments um just start with a broad easy message and then on the website they can read more in detail and advance um, courses themselves always like to put like this big very fluffy message to get people there like it's the future and this and uh, are very they want to have a lot of lot of text and a lot of uh, very big words but it's just a couple of arguments and then if they're interested then they can read for themselves or talk to a buddy about it yeah nice and yeah having those clear you know very concrete points about the the um the aspect and the kind of the influence this degree will have on their career for example i think that's going to be you know having that per program and you know specifically targeted and the right stat for each program um it's gonna yeah sounds like it's going to work really nicely. Um, earlier, we talked a little bit about some of the challenges um, you face um, recruiting and kind of marketing as, as part of a University of Applied mm -hmm. Sciences. Um, based on your experience, what would you say are some of the kind of unique selling points of, a, of going to a University of Applied Science compared to going to a, just a research based university? Uh, yeah, this might be a little uh, geographic. Uh... Might be a bit a bit catered to Belgium, but in Belgium, it's uh, it's easier to get hired with uh, a degree from uh, Applied Science University because uh, they have to pay more for people that have a master's degree, and most of the time the money just isn't there. So there are uh, companies that really just want bachelor degrees and won't even uh, invite master degrees, um, or uh, uh, for uh, theoretical universities. Um, because it's just they already know in advance that they can pay them uh, the salary that they uh, that they have to, so they don't even try to recruit those. Um, it's also still shorter, and in Belgium it's three year for applied sciences, and if you go to a theoretic university, it's five or six or even more years. Um, so they can get into the job market easier, um, and if they want to study more, they can always still go switch over to a to a, a theoretical university. Um, let me see. Uh, and we have also noticed that companies really like that they have more hands-on experience, um, that they already have a, a little network from their teachers. Uh, they have a little bit more experience, the practical side of things. Um, yeah, basically that, especially in some uh, some courses that that's really cater to those, uh, to those to that business aspect of starting your own business and stuff like that. Um, companies really like it if they have more practical experience than knowing how to set up a business is one thing, but if they've actually done it during their um, during their studies, yeah, that's that's, that's an argument that you can't um, yeah can't uh, look next to. Uh, let's see. Let that, that was, yeah, that's great. Think, um, yeah. yeah, some really clear points there and clear advantages. Um, so thanks for running through those. And I guess the last question. I know it's been over half an hour now that we've been going through this Q&A. Um, my last question really before, I think I saw some questions in the chat, so I'll take a look at those after, but um, 
as, as, a, as a kind of way to wrap up this session, um, talking about the student voice and peer to peer, um, perhaps you could fill us in on and tell us a little bit about your future plans and ideas for peer to peer at Carol de Grotte um, for, for the next few months. And I guess in this new virtual world that we live in. Yes, um, what we want to do is uh, make a, a team of students and these students, it would be like a student job for them. So they would get paid for this. Uh, and to basically make content for prospective students, for uh, people that are already uh, at university uh, and to really, uh, really uh, make an investment into it so that they can make fun content, uh, things that uh, the target audience likes. Uh, Oh, excuse me, I'm not saying that they have yeah. to uh, make testimonials, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> testimonials and stuff like that, but I'm, I'm talking content like, okay, you get five minutes in the supermarket and with the things that you grab off the shelf, you have to make a student meal, stuff like that, fun videos um, nice. for students, for prospective students, very low key, uh, not KDG branded, even um, just a very fun brand for prospective students and students, a student brand, if you will. Um, that is subtly connected to KDG, but it's not in your face. KDG presents this because then you have that corporate uh, layer on top of it, which isn't always that, which kind of holds you back sometimes. Um, it's just uh, a student channel with student content. It's KDG is behind it, but it's, it's very subtle. Like uh, some things that they would make content would be on our campuses, of course, but it's not in, uh, in your face marketing from KDG does these videos and that's basically it. I mean, it would be very, and we're going to recruit very um, specific students because you can, uh, you really need somebody who's good in front of a camera, someone who can edit, someone who um, can sell it online, someone who's good with a camera. Uh, so we're going to uh, recruit very specific students to try and get this off the ground and make very fun content and not fun content like the uh, university would think, um, but fun content that they actually would like. And I'm saying like Mr. Beast kind of challenges. These can be Twitch streams. Uh, these could be gaming videos, um, just fun things. And uh, when people are, uh, our vision on that is when prospective students and students see this, okay, this is a very fun brand. These, these students are doing very well. I wonder where they study or I wonder where they got the idea or something. Then they will see, oh, they're studying at KDG and they all study there and they got this chance. And oh, that's, that's very interesting. And maybe I can uh, do something like this and I can uh, study at KDG and become or do something like this and, and become, yeah, yeah, that's basically it. That sounds really good. So basically content from your students, for your students, kind of showing what they would have liked to see. Um, where Do you know where you'll be hosting all that content? I'm just saying that because I'm going to be curious to see it as, as it gets created. Will you be hosting it on a like a YouTube page or something or will it be just that something that you yeah, can then share in your comms? There... Yeah, we were thinking to start with uh, the basic YouTube page. Uh, and when it uh, attracts more, gathers more viewers, we can expand out to like Twitch streams, or we can go to TikTok if they were if they really feel comfortable with that. Um, yeah, and it's basically also what the students tell us. Uh, if if this uh, this team of students this team of students tells us, okay, we feel that it's time that we try Twitch. Okay, then we'll try Twitch. It's also input based from them because we can say, yeah, um, you need to also do a TikTok um, channel, but if they um, uh, statistics show that in Belgium, it's it's not the the prospective age of students, um, or that students aren't that interested in TikTok. Then they um, they would have to do something against their own. Yeah, they yeah um, they have to do what they would like to do. The platforms that they would themselves use and they would like to use. Yeah. Yeah, I have to say I've, I've never. I'm quite embarrassed to say I've never heard of Twitch, but it's good you've got a group of young students keeping it fresh and keeping you young because. Um, there just seems to be newer platforms coming out every day um, and obviously they know all about it so very good to be capitalizing on that and making the most of them and their knowledge of social media and all these new platforms um, that's it for my questions jack unless you have anything you wanted to ask or jump in about any comments i'm going to look at the questions in the chat now in the meantime so not to put you on the spot um, our colleague Alaria asked, um, a lot of universities and universities of applied sciences have had to switch online teaching or are still moving their classes online. Do you find the prospect of online learning is putting off your incoming students? So I guess that's a question for, for Manik. Um, how, do you, how do you kind of market that, the, the fact that now classes are online um, and what's the kind of reaction been amongst your, your prospective students so far? 
Yeah, we've noticed that it is a big, uh, it's a big thing. Um, it's it's quite hard to transition from high school to uh, college university because they get a lot more freedom, and they have these certain expectations that they uh, they get well older from older brothers, older, older sisters, anybody in their network, and it's it's been hard. I'm not gonna lie, um, it's been a real real hard for them. It's been it's been a real hard sell uh, to them. Uh, we did put the focus on. Um, uh, that they would have uh, physical classes like the, the people in the first year they get um, uh, they get more more classes on campus than the second and third year so that they have a little bit of uh, of that feeling um, but it's been hard um, and it's it's a really hard sell um, now they, they they've been doing it in high school as well um, so I guess as time moves on it will be more of a, a, a normality. Um, but yeah, we just uh, we just tell them like we're gonna we're gonna give first years um, some advantage and have those um, and have those students uh, be on campus the most of everybody and that's basically all we can do. Um, and you can also yeah you can put like a little twist on it like uh, on Friday uh, morning you don't have to get out of bed really early. Um, but seeing as how they uh, all all the bars and stuff have closed in Belgium as well, that cell is getting even harder and harder. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not been easy. Um, we cannot say more. And, and I do feel that they appreciate an honest, um, an honest opinion about it. Um, you can be all like, oh yeah, but it's, it's all, we can put everything on campus again. And oh no, no, online teaching is, is great. Everybody loves it, but you can, we try to give the message that it, it's not going to be always going to be fun. We're going to try to get you at campus as much as we can, but we can guarantee it. Um, if there is something, talk to your teachers, talk to this. If you have any ideas how we can improve it for students like you, uh, just let us know and be very genuine. And okay, this is what we are doing. It's us against the virus and us, um, the, the school against the students, um, basically. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, I, I, you know, I do feel for students these days, um, it's very challenging times and it's complicated for all of us, you know, being stuck at home, working from home now for what, is it eight months. So I think, you know, the only thing you can do obviously is just be, be, be kind of honest and, you know, the positives and obviously there are some negatives as well. And I guess having your students there to reassure them of the, you know, that this is just a period of, you know, you're, you're, you're adapting, everyone's adapting, learning from this, but that's all you can say really at the moment. Um, you know, who knows how much longer this will last for. So having those students there to kind of reassure them um, and alleviate those concerns. Um, there was another question from Andy, um, which is from, from Business Academy Aarhus actually in Denmark. He's asked, do you train and manage your international ambassadors in the same way as your domestic ambassadors? And how does the domestic audience receive the Unibody platform when it's in English? Um, and then he's put in brackets, the latter has been a barrier in, a, in Denmark for us. Um, well, our ambassadors uh, don't get that much training, actually. Um, I prefer to send them an email uh, about this is basically what we expect and then just to let them loose. Um, you can always check like their messaging history and stuff in Unibody. So if you are noticing a trend of oh, this is kind of not OK, uh, then you can always uh, tighten the the the, 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 screw, the screws to say it like that. Um, but I like to start broad and then, if necessary, um, intervene. Um, and I think that's easier than that they get. I don't know how many training and guidelines, um, and that they feel stressed even starting uh, to work as an ambassador, and then just feeling not free to answer as, as they wish. Um, I like to start broad and if, if I notice that, okay, this is not going the right way, they need training, then I will do training with uh, the students that uh, might need it because there are ambassadors that do it, that really do it fantastically. And that, that I feel that if we gave them training, they would do perform less, uh, less well. <laughs> um, and for the, the latter, um, now I don't know how it is in Denmark. Um, in Belgium, uh, English is uh, a language that pretty much uh, is very uh, available. Um, you get it very early on in high school. And uh, I think most, yeah, most people here uh, speak English. Um, so it was not a, not a barrier for us that the Unibody platform is in English. We have not noticed that it is. Um, sometimes it's a little bit weird for, oh, this is an English tool, but we've not noticed that it would really put students off of um, interacting with it. Uh, and if we 
if we would notice it, then well, we have we have to look further. But we haven't really um, seen that that it would um, deter them from using it. Um, let's see. That's good uh, to hear. Yes. So they basically. Um, yeah, that has been going really well, and it does help that the, the bios that the prospective students can type, like the profiles, those are uh, in Dutch. So maybe like the interface is in English, but as soon as they see like the Dutch profiles, they're like, okay, now I get it. And don't underestimate them, I would say, because um, even though they they might not uh, get a lot of English in schools, they still uh, they go to YouTube, Twitch, everything is in English. What they get, everything is American. So. Uh, I think they can surprise you with what they know from English, and it's pretty intuitive. So even if they don't know English that well, I think they can still manage the um, the interface for it. Um, and if then the, the the prospective students and their profiles are like in Danish or any other language, then they're okay, fine. And if you have like this big button below, like talk with this or this person, it's very intuitive to click it and then still know what you have to do. And then start start the conversation in your your own language, I guess. If you found yeah. an ambassador who yeah. speaks your sure. language, um, just just keep going in your in your language. Um, super Emma, I just saw Emma's comment. Let them loose. It's all about that authentic student voice. I did love that little um, quote from you there. Um, so thank you. Um, I think that's just about wraps up the session. Um, Poppy, ah, oh, amazing. Just on right on cue. <laughs> Um, Bye. Yeah, I'll leave you. Um, thank you so much, Manik, for joining and Jack for taking part in our session today. Um, the first session we've done um, focused on, you know, universities of applied sciences. So thank you so much for all those insights. Um, super, super helpful. I mean, I've learned a lot um, and I'm sure everyone else has as well. So thanks for sharing everything with us today. Okay, sure. You're welcome. Um, if there's any questions, just um... Yeah, just hit me up. My name is, um, I think, somewhere uh, that you can find it. And it's just at kdg.be uh, if you still want to spar about something. Yeah.